Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today. My name is Heidi Roth and I'm a registered dietitian as well as holistic health coach. So I'm glad you could join me in my kitchen. Today we're going to be talking about um, making some treats for the summertime. Um, you know, some of us have been doing socially distancing, entertaining, maybe having a friend or two over on our deck. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about some healthy appetizers that I really enjoy, as well as um, how to make some mocktails. So um, how to feel like you can still um, have some, a special little drink, but without the alcohol. So let's get started. Um, as usual, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the chat section. Um, I might stop halfway through to ask Andrea, who's helping me out today, um, if she can help me out with some of the chat questions. But otherwise, I'll save a minute or two at the end, um, and then if anybody has any questions, then we can also talk then. So let's get started. So we're gonna make, be, the things that we're gonna be making today, um, we are going to be making a, um, a shrimp cocktail um, some roasted chickpeas, a seven layer um, Greek dip, as well as one of my favorites, which is um, little tomato caprese um, bites. So my daughter made these ready for this morning. This is one of the most simple appetizers that you can make. You've got your tomatoes, your basil, and all you do is you take a toothpick and put it through the tomato. Two picks were sitting here on a tray and that one. Okay, put a piece of fresh mozzarella through. Um, if you can't get your hands on fresh mozzarella, that's okay. And then just put the little piece of basil at the end. Uh, you can see right here, I've got my basil. I like to buy it at the farm stand and then I cut off the roots. Somehow for, for me, it doesn't seem to do well when I put the roots in water. Um, if I'm, so I take my basil and I just keep it on my counter in a glass of water and it seems to be pretty happy that way. Um, sometimes it will even start sprouting some new roots. So in summer, if you don't have any growing outside in your garden, um, quick and easy way to have some extra basil on hand. All right, and then it's sometimes nice to have a little sauce to go with our little tomato bites. And so easy, all you do is take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And this is the case, you know, when you're having olive oil and you're putting it on salad or using it as an appetizer, this would be really the case for using a, a, a high quality olive oil. I like this California olive ranch, but you know, I'm not necessarily promoting it. It just happens to be a good brand. And I found this on at Costco, so that was kind of a good find. So just put a little bit of olive oil in there, um, a little bit of balsamic vinegar. And vinegar, you know, we always hear about the benefits of apple cider vinegar, you know, can help with blood sugar levels, can help with digestion. Um, any type of vinegar is really going to be healthy for you. It contains something called acetic acid, um, which has many health benefits. So then I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. And give it a quick stir. Now this is, this won't necessarily, um, will continue to separate because oil and, and vinegar don't mix, they separate out, but that's okay. And then you can just take one of your little tomato caprices and dip it in the vinegar and olive oil and you've got a lovely little appetizer. Um, honestly, even if you didn't want the sauce to dip it in, they're delicious just even on their own. So one of the other things, so I'm gonna put that aside for now. And let's talk about our shrimp and roasted chickpeas. So I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. And now shrimp cocktail is something that, you know, maybe we've all made, a, had a hundred times. It is so incredibly easy to make at home. Now I used to buy my shrimp already cooked and then I would just defrost them. But to tell you the truth, they always tasted a little rubbery to me, and it was never just something that I really liked doing. Um, of course, it's much better if you cook the shrimp yourself at home, but boiling it always, uh, you know, seemed to be a lot of work. Um, I have recently discovered roasting your shrimp, and it is a game changer. It's no longer watery and kind of soggy, and it's just really delicious and so quick and easy. 
So what I'm going to do is take my olive oil again and just you know, give it a little drizzle here. And then some salt and pepper. Quick pinch of salt, a little bit of pepper. Um, I've been using this pink Himalayan sea salt. And you know, it has some minerals in it, but honestly, at the end of the day, salt is salt in terms of the nutritional benefits. It's certainly not any more nutritious than, than regular salt. Not that salt is nutritious, it's something that you know we want to keep an eye on that we're not using too much. But I like this pink salt because it's pink and it's pretty and fancy and makes me happy. So that's that's what I tend to use. Um, but not necessarily because there's any great nutritional benefits. So I'm gonna take my shrimp and just kind of move around here. And then I'm going to put it in a 400 degree oven for 10 minutes. And then as soon as, you know, different shrimp based on the size will cook at different times. Um, now, if you look at the shrimp, you're probably wondering why is it pink, Heidi? That's raw shrimp. Raw shrimp isn't pink. I agree. Raw shrimp is normally um, gray. But I sent my daughter to the store this morning and she came home with, from Trader Joe's, I guess they sell some sort of shrimp from South America that's actually pink when it's raw. Um, so don't let that, you know, uh, confuse you. This is actually, <laughs> this is actually raw shrimp. Uh, typically when the shrimp turns opaque and, um, you know, you can, you can give it a little touch with your finger. Once it's a little, fir once it's firm and opaque, you know, it's done. So roughly I'm going to put this shrimp, this is kind of a large shrimp. I'm going to put this in for about 10 minutes. You don't want to overcook the shrimp because then they're going to be really, really tough. Um, so, you know, whatever, you know, based on the size, but in general, about a 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes, um, will do the trick. Now, over here, I also have um, some chickpeas that I've just rinsed and drained. So I just opened up a can of chickpeas, put them on, on this tray, and um, I'm also going to give it my usual treatment. You got the drill now, right? Um, a little bit of olive oil and some salt, and just salt, um, and a little bit of pepper. Now, I'm going to kind of roll these around in that olive oil and kind of spread them out on the tray. On the tray, um, you know, going to kind of socially distance them so that they're not touching each other. And um, and it's no big deal if they touch each other. It's just the more space that they have in between, the crispier they'll get. Um, these. I'm going to put in the oven as well, but these are going to cook for about twice as long as the shrimp. So the shrimp will be about 10 minutes. These are going to be 20 minutes. So I'm just going to pop in my, in my oven real quick. And through the miracle of online cooking demos, we have some chickpeas that are already roasted. So you can see they're kind of browned, a little roasted. Um, I like them when they're a little bit crunchy on the outside and still kind of soft and tender and chewy on the inside. I don't like them when they're completely cooked through and kind of dried. Honestly, to tell you the truth, the ones that come in a bag, um, well, healthy, you know, the ones that you can buy in the store that are made already, they're healthy, but I find these so much better. Um, it was really hard for me when I made these this morning not to eat the pan because a lot of times these these things don't even make it off the pan so these i prefer kind of hot out of the oven um, and they are absolutely delicious now what you could do is you could just serve them the way that they are you could also amp up the nutrition a little bit and add some curry powder to it the curry powder is a mix it's a blend of spices but the main thing in curry powder is turmeric so um, this not only gives it a delicious flavoring, but also some extra spice and health benefits. So I'm just going to um, put these in my bowl. 
And these, sometimes I'll make these even while I'm cooking dinner. You know, if you've ever cooked dinner before and you're like, oh, I'm so hungry, I need a little snack. Sometimes I'll just throw a quick tray of these in. So there you can see, voila, we have our curried chickpeas. Now, if you don't like curry, just keep it off. Um, you could put on um, any type of seasoning. You could use some herbs to Provence. You could use some Italian seasoning. You know, whatever, whatever uh, tasted good to you. So I'm just gonna put that aside. And now for my, for oh, for the shrimp, also through the miracle of online, we have some shrimp that's already cooked. Now, if you're having people over, you know, now with social distancing, a lot of times you don't want one big tray. You know, if you're having another family over, um, you know, and sitting outside separated, it's sometimes nice to have different, you know, one, one plate for you and one plate for your guests if you are gonna have you know, another family over. So I like to just put them on small plates rather than if you're entertaining you know, outside than one big plate. And a little bit of cocktail sauce and voila, we have our roasted shrimp cocktail. Now a lot of times people ask, is shrimp healthy? Um, and to which I would say resounding yes, shrimp has um, some zinc in it, has a lot of protein, very little fat. It does have cholesterol, um, but the recent nutritional guidelines that came out said that, that cholesterol is really no longer a nutrient of concern. So we don't need to be worried about getting too much cholesterol anymore. So um, now it, with a caveat that there are some people out there, about 5% of the population are what we call hyper responders to cholesterol. Um, for most people, it's the amount of saturated fat you eat as well as the amount of um, junk food and processed food that are going to make a difference in your cholesterol levels. Okay, this, the last thing we're going to make is a seven layer Greek dip. And this is one of my favorite appetizers. Um, so probably maybe many of you are familiar with a seven layer Mexican dip or South America, um, you know, Southwestern dip. But this is going to be a seven layer Greek dip. Now, you can do as many layers as you want. But if you want to do all seven layers, I'll show you how to do all seven layers. And honestly, probably the only layer that's really important is the hummus in terms of taste. So we're, I'm going to start with a little bit of Greek yogurt. This is a, and spread it on the bottom of my plate. Now, once again, I'm not using a big, huge tray because, um, you know, no one's going to eat one family probably wouldn't eat a whole big tray. So it's nice just to put it on a smaller amount, the, 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 the size tray that you think that you might eat at one sitting. So I'm just gonna take my Greek dip, or I'm sorry, my Greek yogurt, put it at the bottom. Now, if you are plant-based and only plant, and just 100% plant-based, easy enough, just skip the Greek yogurt. No need to have that on there. And next, I'm going to be putting on my hummus. So for any of you Costco members, this big tub of hummus is on sale this month. So this is one of my favorite hummuses. I do love, I do love the soccer hummus. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth that around on top. So now we got two, two layers. And now comes all the toppings. So, you know, you can kind of pick and choose which ones appeal to you, which ones maybe you don't. Now, I love, love, love tomatoes and cucumbers, um, roasted red peppers. So I'll put my roasted red peppers on first. Um, if you don't have any roasted red peppers, keep it off or use um, fresh red peppers. That would work too. And then I'm going to put my cucumbers on. Um, I've got just to have some diced cucumbers and then some diced tomatoes. And now let's say that you are making this advance for, for, you know, that you were going to serve it right away. You don't want to put the salty stuff on. What the salty things do is it's going to draw a little bit of the water out of the cucumbers and tomatoes. Um, but, you know, if you're going to serve it, and it's not a big deal. Uh, sometimes you just get a little 
liquid floating around at the bottom. But, you know, assuming that we're going to serve it right away, I'm going to add some Kalamata olives on top. And then, once again, if you, if you do eat dairy, lastly, you can put some feta cheese on top as the last layer. And we now have our delicious, healthy seven layer dip. Um, now, if you happen to have a little bit of fresh dill on hand, would also certainly be lovely. Uh, this is also some dill that I got at the farmer's market. And um, dill is also part of Greek cooking. You know, it's used extensively in Scandinavian cooking, but also a lot in Greek cooking. And it's, it's really one of my favorite spices, so, or herbs, I should say. So you could certainly put that on top as a little garnish. Um, and voila, we have our seven layer Greek dip. And this um, is, you know, you could serve it with some, some pita chips that you had made yourself, some whole wheat pita chips. Um, you could use some extra cucumber slices, whatever you liked. Um, so we have that there. All right, so I'm gonna transition now to our mocktails, but I see some people had asked some questions, one or two questions. So I'm happy to answer those. Um, I'm gonna ask Andrea, if you wouldn't mind. Andrea, would you mind helping me out and reading um, the questions that people have? Sure, we have one that's on any specific hummus flavors for the dip. Oh, um, you know, honestly, whatever you like. Um, you know, whatever's on sale, if you like the roasted garlic. Uh, this, the one that I used is a roasted pine nut hummus. Um, but it really, you know, what, whatever type of hummus that you normally would use would be, would be perfectly good. Yeah. And then we had another comment on Himalayan pink salt does have a mineral content that regular table salt does not. Um, it does. It has, it does have some minerals. Um, so the thing is, that, and that, that's what gives it the pink color is different types of minerals. Um, the thing is that we're not really using salt to get minerals um, because hopefully we're not using too much salt. So um, yeah, I mean, you could argue it does have maybe some nutritional benefits where regular salt doesn't. But the thing to keep in mind though, and this is really important, if you are 100% plant-based, it's really important that you use the regular um, iodized salt that has iodine, iodine added to it because this salt doesn't have any iodine added to it. So if you're not drinking any dairy, um, and if you're not you know, eating shellfish, any seaweed, typical sources of iodine, I would recommend not using pink sea salt, but just using regular table salt that, that, was, that did have the iodine added to it. Um, other, and that was a public health measure that was started, I believe in the 1930s, because a lot of people were getting goiters because they had an iodine deficiency. So, um, all right, any more questions before we move on to our mocktails? We just had one question about getting the recipes, which I said that people can email me for the recipes if they want them. Oh yeah, certainly. Um, do we want to post it on the, on, um, oh yeah, actually that might be kind of difficult. Um, I'll okay. post my email now. I'm sorry? I'll post my email now. Okay, good. <laughs> um, sounds good. All right, so, now we have some healthy mocktails, and this is this is kind of fun. Um, so I'm just gonna make myself a little room here. Let's put this so it's not quite so much in our way. So with a mocktail, you know, just a couple things on mocktails. Um, really easy to make. You can use sparkling, um, you know, juice all kinds of different things that you can use. You can be really creative with them. One of the things that I like to do is I like to make some simple syrup. So a lot of times cocktails call for simple syrup. And even in a mocktail, if we're using a fair amount of lime juice or lemon juice, sometimes you wanna balance out some of that sourness with a little tiny bit of sweet. Now we're not looking to add in a lot of extra sugar and make this into you know, a super syrupy sweet drink, but just enough to balance out some of the um, lemon juice or lime juice that you might typically add. So one of the things I love to make is a ginger simple syrup. And I found that it pretty much works with 
every flavor. Um, I, you know, I, I make sometimes a batch and I put it in my freezer if I have a little bit like left over. So what I'm using here is I'm using an organic um, cane sugar and I have half a cup and simple syrup's really easy. Then you just add in half a cup of water. So it's, it's basically one to one. If you just wanted to make a tiny, tiny bit, you could just use a tablespoon of, of sugar, a tablespoon of water. Um, I like to make a little bit more that I can just, you know, as I mentioned, keep in the freezer. And now what I have here is I have some ginger that I cut into um, slices. So I took my ginger, I peeled it, I took the skin off the ginger, um, and then I just, you know, cut some slices. I'm gonna put that in my, in, in with the sugar in the water, give it a quick stir, and I'm just gonna throw that on the stove and turn it on and simmer it for about um, five or 10 minutes. And what's going to do is the sugar is going to melt and then let, let it sit on, you know, just let it cool down naturally for about two hours or so. And all those delicious flavors of the ginger will, um, you know, kind of infuse into the, the syrup. If you make extra that, you, that you're gonna keep, just keep the ginger in there and it will keep on infusing. Um, and there is, you know, in my mind, there's no such thing as too much ginger because Ginger has so many health benefits and it also gives a nice little, nice little kick to, your, to your, some of your mocktails. So I'll put that on the stove. And I already have some ginger that I made here already. Some ginger syrup. So this I just pulled out of my freezer this morning. It's defrosted. And I've got my ginger simple syrup. Okay, so why don't we start with making a, instead of a martini, we're gonna make a green tea ginger martini. Get, get it? Yeah. So um, I am kind of hokey. But, so what I did was I took some green tea and I just boiled the water, two, two packets of, of green tea in. These are peach flavored. Um, so it adds, you know, an additional little flavor, which, which is nice. I'm going to take six ounces. And here I have a Boston shaker. So if you've ever go to Starbucks and you hear them shaking those teas, this is kind of what we're going to do here. We're going to take six ounces of green tea. And we're going to add in a tablespoon or two of ginger syrup. And, you know, depending on how sweet you like it. Um, I don't like my cocktails very sweet, so I don't want to add a lot in it. Plus, we're not looking to have like a super add in lots of extra sugar. We just want a little bit. Um, and then I'll take my ice. My ice. Now, if, if you don't have a Boston shaker, what you can also do is just mix this together and pour it right over crushed ice and then strain it out. Um, but if you, if you have a Boston shaker, it kind of, you know, kind of gives that that extra little specialness. So I'm just going to pour that in. Um, does it sound like Starbucks? And then... So what shaking does is it kind of gives it a nice little froth. And it just really kind of helps to dilute the drink a little bit so you get a little bit more. There we go. Pour that in there. Now, a lot of times it's easy to make, um, this is a martini normally, but it's easy to make drinks with cocktail, with vodka into it, into a mocktail, because vodka doesn't have much flavor or much taste. So vodka-based drinks are really easy. You know, you can make a um, no-teeny with, um, you know, perhaps, you know, instead of a cosmopolitan, you can make one just keeping the vodka out. And so what makes it special too when you have a mocktail is just adding that extra little touch of a garnish. So this is just some candied ginger. Um, this I buy from Trader Joe's. And this is one of those things that falls under the category of a treat, but also with a little bit of health benefits. 
So sometimes when you just want a little something sweet, I keep these in my cupboard and I'll pop a piece of candy ginger um, that will have some of the nutritional benefits of ginger, um, but you know, kind of a little treat. So that's our cocktail number one, our ginger green tea. All right, the other thing that I like to do a lot of times while I'm making dinner is, you know, sometimes I find myself while making dinner sometimes of pouring myself a glass of wine. And, and it's really you know, not a habit I, that I want to be into every night when I have dinner. So to get myself out of that habit, a lot of times what I do is I'll just make myself a super quick and easy little drink. I'll take some ice in a glass, add in some sparkling water. Oh. Wow, thought I almost had it. <laughs> this was very fizzy, probably because it was not chilled. And I'll add in some sparkling water. And then, and if you wanted to make it a flavored sparkling water, you know that would be nice too. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be. And then just some pieces of cut fruit. Um, you know, I have some strawberries here, whatever fruit you have in the fridge. Uh, sometimes if I have some fruit that's kind of a little bit overripe, I'll freeze it, I'll cut it up, put it in the freezer, and use it for my little, you know, fancy dinner time mocktails. So there we go, I've got that. And as I had mentioned, sometimes what makes a drink feel special is the garnish. So if you had some mint in your garden, um, maybe some basil on your countertop, like I do here. Um, you know, you could take a little sprig of basil and garnish your drink with, and that would be very lovely as well. Okay, so the, let's see how much time do we have. Oh, okay, so one more drink. So now what I'm going to make is a cucumber no-hito. So instead of a mojito, we're making a no keto. So I love cucumbers. Um, if you don't like cucumbers, you can certainly just keep it out. You could muddle any type of fruit that you wanted. Um, you know, but basically the no keto is going to be, you know, either just plain or you could use some fruit, some cucumber. Of course, we're going to use some mint. Now I have mint growing in my garden, but I think I got the wrong type of mint. I think I got peppermint and spearmint. I really like the spearmint, so um, I picked some up at the store. So just a couple mint leaves, you know, maybe about five mint leaves, depending on how much you, you like it to be minty or not. Um, and then we'll add in a little bit of our ginger simple syrup. So just add in a tablespoon or two of that. Um, and then, of course, lime juice. And lime juice has lots and lots of vitamin C. So in addition to some of the antioxidants that we're getting from the mint, we're getting lots of vitamin C from the lime juice. This is one of the little things that I got off of Amazon. It's, so if you like to make cocktails or tend to juice a lot of limes, it makes really quick, easy work of it. I'm just gonna do that. And now my muddler. So this is kind of, you know, the professional muddler. If you don't have one of these, that's okay. You could just use, you know, a spoon, the back of a spoon. Um, basically what you're trying to do is crush some of the mint leaves and get um, the flavor out of the mint and get the flavor out of the cucumber. Um, and once again, you don't need to use simple syrup for this recipe. If you didn't have any simple syrup, you could just crush it with a tablespoon of or a teaspoon of sugar, you know, depending on how much how sweet you did or didn't like it. So we have that. And now I'm going to add in my sparkling water. So about, you know, depending on the size of the drink that you're making, you want to fill up the glass about halfway with sparkling water. And then the rest of the way, you're going to fill up with ice. Now, don't worry about using too much ice in your drinks. Paradoxically, the more ice you have, 
the colder it actually stays um, and the less your ice will melt. So don't worry um, about using too much ice. For me, that kind of makes, is what makes the drink so pretty. So, and of course, it's nice to sometimes add in an extra mint leaf as a garnish, um, you know, whatever you have available as a garnish you can add. All right, so here we have our cocktails. We've got our green, our ginger green tea, and our sparkling water with fruit and basil, and then our cucumber um, nojito. So looks like we are just at 1.30 right now, and we're at the end of our time here. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to show you real quick one of the other things I like to do is I like to take pineapple, or excuse me, watermelon, blend it up in the blender with a little bit of lime juice and just pour that over ice as well. Also makes a really nice, refreshing summer drink in addition as well. Um, so, cheers. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we do, I have some time for questions now if anybody wanted to you know, stick around and uh, ask a question or two. I see that there might be a couple in the chat section. Andrea, can you, would you mind reading this for me? Sure. Got one from the Q&A that was, how long will the herbs last in the glass? Do they need to be washed or are they pre-washed? Love the kitchen and thanks to your daughter for her help today. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, let's see, so typically these, if they start to take root, these will last quite a while just in a glass on your, on your countertop. If it doesn't take root, um, it maybe will last two weeks or so. Um, sometimes they start getting little brown spots on them. I haven't quite figured out what makes them happy and what doesn't, but sometimes when they do take root, I'm like so excited, like, yay, they started to take root, and then it'll last for quite a while. Um, the, the dill, when I keep that in the fridge, this is already a week old and it, it's perfectly fine. This one I did, you do keep the roots on and I just put it a little, in a little bit of water and keep it in the fridge. Um, it does, it prefers it in the fridge. Basil doesn't like being refrigerated. Um, it sometimes gets kind of weird brown spots on it. Um, so. Thank you. Any other questions? Nope, that is it. But as a reminder, if anyone wants the recipes, please email me at andreamaestros at harvardpilgrim.org. I put it in the chat. So if you want the recipes, I'm just going to be responding to anyone who reaches out to me. So, okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining me here today and um, have a lovely rest of your week. And uh, go ahead and cook something healthy for yourself. We'll see you soon. Thanks. <laughs>